about 15 minutes into the firing, I'm up to about 193 degrees Fahrenheit. I just bumped up the flame a little bit, but you can see I've got it set pretty low. Aiming for a cone 010 bisque firing. I've got a load of uh, white stoneware and B mix in the kiln, and uh, this is the number 16th bisque firing I've done in my little kiln. And I've started to bisque all of my ware to cone 010. And I've pretty much got it dialed in where I can do that safely in just two hours in the kiln. Of course, that's with a five to six or even longer preheat done in the oven to burn out uh, all of the uh, physical water. I slowly bring it from 170 degrees up to about 250 degrees over the course of many hours and everything is absolutely bone dry when I load it in here so I can go a little bit faster than normal when uh, when starting up. Alright, we're about 30 minutes into the firing and right at the 30 minute mark I was at 328 Fahrenheit, now we're at 333. Um, I'm going to kick it into gear a little bit and uh, move a little bit faster up to about 600 degrees when we we'll slow it down between 600 and 1100. I want to get up to the point where I start cooking off the chemical water. Alright, that ought to be enough to get us there. Check in again in 15 minutes. Beautiful evening for a bisque firing in my little homemade kiln out here on the dock. You got two propane bottles I'm working on that are almost empty so I've got my spares behind ready to switch over when I need to. Nice quiet evening, about 85 degrees down here in southwest Florida. Kiln's perking right along. It's about five minutes since I checked in last time and up to almost 400 degrees right now so we're pretty much on schedule. I keep a little log of every firing so I know I can refer back to uh, previous firings and see where I was and adjust my temperature accordingly but uh, right now we're right where I want to be. Check back with you soon. Alright, been going a little over 45 minutes now. Got it up to uh, 593 degrees at the 45 minute mark and as you can see I've kicked up the flame a little bit so that it's uh, burning blue now. I'm watching real close because my two, this is the fifth or sixth bisque firing I've done on these two tanks of propane. They're getting pretty low and I'm going to run out before this firing's over so uh, I don't want to lose too much temperature when that happens so I'm keeping a close watch so I can make the changeover fast. And as you can see, my loyal little kin dog Patches is out here with me, making sure I stay safe. Got sunset coming up in about 15 minutes, so the rest of this firing, I'm going to take a picture off to the east here. Not much to be seen from this angle, but uh, it's going to be a pretty evening, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool looking at this thing when it's cherry red uh, in the dark tonight. Uh, I'm one hour into the firing now. I'm up to about 910 degrees. You see, I got a pretty good flame going in. It seems to be set about right. I'm going to leave it where it is and uh, hopefully get over the 1,060 degree mark, maybe up to about 1,100 before my uh, before my propane runs out. I don't want to have to go through the quartz inversion temperature twice. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Beautiful evening. No alligators out tonight, a couple of turtles swimming around. This is alligator mating season and usually we see some this time of the evening, but nothing showing up so far. Well, the sun set about 15 minutes ago. I've been going for an hour and 15 minutes up to 1100 degrees. Still working on my original two propane tanks, which kind of amazes me. I've just kicked it into gear again. We're over 1100, so I'm going to rock and roll. In fact, I'm going to boost it a little more right now. I want to get it up in the next half an hour from 1100 to 1650, and I'm going to soak it 
at 1650 or as close as I can hold it at that point for 15 minutes. Give me a two hour bisque firing, then we'll seal this puppy up. Next check in 15 minutes from now. Oh, who's this? Oh, my cat Casey is out here with me now. Hi, Casey. Up to 1300 degrees now. Got about 35 minutes to go. Figure 20 minutes to hit my 1650 degree Fahrenheit target temperature. A 15 minute soak at that temperature. The whole thing will be done in two hours. Amazingly, I'm still on that almost empty two tanks of propane that I started out with. You can see it's kind of getting dark out here now. Beautiful evening, about 80 degrees. Hotter than that out here on the dock with this kiln radiating heat. Life is good. It's the back side of my kiln. You can see some hot spots in the lid and on the side. Glowing red. See where the lid is and pushed down completely tight. I'm getting mighty, mighty hot inside. Had to change over the tanks, finally got up almost 1400 degrees Fahrenheit, and the flame started diminishing, so I went ahead and made the change over. And now, what I did with my. Uh, we're up to 1416. So, about 240, 250 degrees to go. Uh, 825 so we're right on schedule going to hold it there for 10-15 minutes and soak it at that temperature and I should hit a cone 10 or excuse me a cone 010 and I've got uh, some cone 010 cone packs not cone packs they're just single cones but I've got them situated in different parts of the kiln just to see where my hot spots are and uh, just to make sure I hit my target uh, cone bisque level. Well I've been firing for one hour and 55 minutes. I changed out my thermal couple because it started acting weird. Put a different one on and it got up to temperature almost. It got up to about 1570 degrees and froze. So I was flying blind at that point. I checked my my cones and the one that was closest to the burner was down hard, so I'm, I'm figuring now I'm at a cone 010 bisque, and uh, close enough. I'm going to call it quits for the night and hope that uh, I've had a successful firing. Well, the burner's off. It's all sealed up. You can see it's still glowing red hot in there and will for another hour or so at least. Uh, it's going to be uh, four or five hours minimum before this thing cools off enough to crack the lid. So it'll probably be tomorrow morning before the unloading portion. It's almost 8 o'clock in the morning so this thing has been cooling for 11 hours and we're still at 235 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and crack the lid though. We're below the, uh, the 400 degree Cristobalite formation area so safe to go ahead and open up the lid and let it cool off a little bit. Well, it looks like I do have a problem on this top pot. Not good to see. Now we'll unload fully later. Well the kiln is unloaded now. You can see uh, the three different uh, cone 010 cone that I had located throughout the kiln are all down flat, so it's definitely a cone 010 bisque firing. And I've got uh, two stoneware uh, inverted rim bowls that uh, I'm going to use uh, for a Sager and horsehair firing this week, and they came out pretty nice. And I've got a little textured bowl here that's uh, still pretty hot that I'm going to do a raku firing with. That one is this one is raku clay. These two are stoneware, and my B-Mix bowl came out okay, except for this big splinter that fractured off, and I think the reason that happened, this was actually wetware. I made this bowl uh, 
about noon yesterday, put it in the oven at about one o'clock to dry it, and I probably did not allow enough time uh, in the oven before I put it in the kiln. I dried it from about one o'clock in the afternoon up into about till about 6:30 that evening in the oven, and obviously there was uh, something in there that. Uh, Cause that to splinter. I think I can still, it'll still be a functional bowl, it's just not going to be a very pretty one, but it'll have a story behind it. Anyway, that's it.